This is the QK Alice Duo. So it comes in an absolutely stunning carrying case. It's got a very nice material to it and the colors. Be aware that the carrying case is absolutely beautiful, but it's massive. <laughs> PCB and plate boxes. It's got wrist rests in here. So that kind of, I guess, explains why it's so big. These are QK stabilizers. Very cool. Comes with a set of stabilizers right here. We'll decide if we want to use the QK stabilizers. FR4 plates. Very cool. Got some flex cuts in them. It's good balance of flex while still offering a good amount of stability. PCB as well as some foams right here. Fantastic. This board, because of the Alice layout and it's a split Alice. It's got its own wrist rests that are kind of custom designed. And there we go. Oh, these are lovely. First glance, looks amazing. I think it's got a good balance of a uh, frosted look while having a nice feeling metal behind it. And now for the grand reveal. <gasps> oh my God. Absolutely beautiful. Gold and the mint just go really well together. I think they've really knocked it out of park this time in terms of color. This little guy. It's quite interesting that they chose to have a kind of open design up here so you can see the PCB behind it. Interesting choice. I quite like it. It's got a slightly tech chic look to it. Relatively small piece. USB-C on top. Pretty standard. Magnetic con connectors over here. So we can talk a little bit about the cables after this. That's one of the features. This seems to be the last box of accessories. Let's go with the easy stuff first. First, you got your pretty standard. You've got your um, keycap puller. You've got a braided cable. It is not coiled, but it is, looks to be quite nice quality. So not bad until you get your uh, coiled cables. And then you've got a pretty standard switch puller. Okay. Standard accessory kit. And here are the cables that we were talking about. They are magnetic and pogo style, so they just kind of lock on. Like gaskets. Okay. Different set of gaskets. And some extra feet. All right, it's time to open. Oh my god, look at that color. The anodization quality looks to be fantastic, as is expected. Tape. This part right here is quite interesting, right? A lot of times with your Alice boards, you know, it's not really all that adjustable. So this one is adjustable in two ways. One, it's split, so you can put your hands as far as possible. And secondly, I believe these are tenting and adjustable. There's a mechanism right here that extends up to this angle, and it basically lets you have a slightly tilted experience, right? Which, if you think about your hands, your hands are naturally slightly slanted right on the right-hand side. So if the board is slightly slanted this way, it's actually a more ergonomic position. It's definitely gonna get, take some getting used to, but I think this is probably the configuration that I'm gonna run them at. So it's adjustable both from hand separation as well as the angle of your hand, which I love. I think this is very well thought out, very well designed. And then the last thing to note is the screw is a little close to the case itself. Um, the anodization is usually quite tough, so you should be okay, but you know, just try not to bang your hex driver against the anodization. It's held together by four screws. But yeah, now that we've got our part, here's what it looks like. Let's start putting together our PCB and our plate. Here we are, I put the stabilizers in. As you can see, you need three on the right side and two on the left. In my package, I only got four from the QK stabilizer set. If you are using the same layout as I am, you might have to get an extra set of stabilizers. What I've used here is a set of TX stabilizers that is the 1.2 millimeter PCB mount. So obviously you have to choose the right thickness for your PCB. Um, I'm using 1.2 and hence I've used the 1.2 kit. Uh, but you are gonna need five 2U stabilizers if you're gonna use the standard layout. And the other part to note is for the standard layout, on the top right of the right hand side, you're gonna have to cut along these perforated lines over here and over here to be able to put the stabilizer in. It's very simple, just cut using a pair of scissors, follow the perforated line and cut that out. Again, this is dependent on the layout that you've chosen. If you'd rather have two keycaps here instead of one long one, then you won't have to cut it. Similarly, on the left-hand side, this stabilizer right here is also cut along the perforated edges. That's something that you have to do in terms of preparation. And the first step is really to line up the PE foam with your PCB and putting your stabilizers in. Now, when putting your stabilizers in, it is important to remember, if you're using a clip-in style like I am, one leg part without the split legs go into the bigger hole, and the split leg goes into the smaller hole. 
If you do it backwards, it won't work and it will keep popping out and you won't be able to put switches in. So make sure you follow this alignment. Single leg, big hole, double leg, small hole, okay? And once you put it that way, it should pop in very easily. Now, as a, as a quick check, once you've done it, this is what your board PCBs should look like from a left and right perspective. Pay special attention to where the stabilizer metal bar is. Starting from the left, you go bottom, and then on the second from the left, it's on top, and over here it's on top, and then bottom, bottom. That is the layout that you need if you are following the layout that I have chosen. The next step is to lay on the foam between the PCB and the plate. The stabilizers, it should self-align relatively easily now that the stabilizers are in place. And then we pop over the plate. I've chosen an FR4 plate. You're gonna be putting on the plate of your choice over here, right? Obviously you could choose to go without foam in between the plates, but I'm, I'm choosing to build this right now with all the foams possible. First, make sure the PE foam inside is still aligned to the holes, right? Just took a quick look. You should be able to see clean holes there. You shouldn't be able to see much of the PCB coming through. In this case, it looks pretty good. Next step is to take your plates. This is the top, this is the top, and I've done it on this side already, but essentially these are light diffusers and you need to put them in before you put your switches in. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do it all over again. So do not forget this step. There's one thing you learned from this video. Make sure you do the diffusers first. This is the top. What you do is flip them upside down, take the diffuser and slot them through. Of course, as you may know, the pre-orders have now opened on loomkeeps.com, which is our website, www.loomkeeps.com. If you haven't checked us out yet, check us out. We have a lot of boards, a lot of switches and a lot of accessories. Once you slot them through, pull, and that's in. So there's four of these small guys on each side and one big one on the side, on each side. Make sure you get the diffusers in nice and good. Okay, so that that's in. Make sure to check that they're all straight. Following which, there's one on the side, it's a big one. This one is not a teardrop shape, so just slide it through. And this one is a little looser, so it's not gonna stay on, it's gonna fall off. But that's okay, and that's that. Four small, one big. I have an additional two small guys and one big guy, um, which I think it's just for spares. Line it up with your board and the PCB, and there are these little hole cutouts where the diffusers would then sit, essentially. On this build, we are using the PCB plate foam. So that's what we're doing here. Separating the foams apart, followed by the plate that we had just put together. Voila. It should fit into the holes quite nicely. And just make sure the diffuser up here is slotted in nicely into the foam. And there you go. You can start populating your switches. Now that we're here to do the switches, the most important part with any build, not just for this, any build that you do, is you always support the back when you put the switches in, right? Make sure you're supporting the socket and that makes sure that you're not gonna poke the socket out. If your pins are bent, for example, and you force it in, there is the possibility that you will break the socket. So be very careful. This is the first switch. It's critical in getting the alignment right. Do not use too much force. If it doesn't wanna go in, chances are you are slightly misaligned between your plate and your PCB. So that one went in perfectly. Then check on the bottom, switches are in, the legs are in perfectly, we're good to go. We'll do one more in the middle and then we'll start doing the sides just to make sure that the whole board is perfectly aligned. Perfect, there we go. Note that if you have a softer plate, for example, the PC or PP plates, those are softer. There's a chance that when you push this switch in, the plate would just bend and it won't hook on that's normal. Uh, what you're gonna need to do is get something like a plate support fork, which we have in our store. Check us out at loomkeeps.com plate support fork. It's called the what the fork. We have a link to the video above that explains this in more detail. But a quick note is you're basically sliding this through between your plate and your PCB. And this helps support your plate so that it doesn't bend too much and it allows you to then put your switches in. Keep in mind that some of these sockets have an upside down orientation. Depending on what layout you've chosen, make sure that you're putting the switch in in the correct orientation. Next up, we're gonna do the edges. So we'll do the bottom. We are gonna, so on this layout we've chosen, we have the arrow keys, up, down, left, right. Up, down, and left, it's gonna face the normal positioning, right? Legs facing up, standard. That went in smoothly, perfect. 
on the right key, back on the back, you will see that this is on the side. So the one that you want is actually on the bottom. So if you are following my layout, you're going to want to put your legs on the bottom. This is very important. If you put your legs on the top with this layout and you force it in, you are going to break either your switch or the socket. So be very careful about the orientation of these switches. Now that we've done two on the bottom, we're going to do some on the top just to balance it out and make sure that every part of the board is perfectly aligned. That went in nice and easy. Perfect. And we'll just keep going. As you're doing this, make sure you check your legs for the switches. Make sure that they are straight. Sometimes during transit, some may get slightly bent. That's perfectly normal. What you do is you take a pair of tweezers and you gently bend it back in, into shape and you are back in business. Here you go. And we have now built the left side. Actually, no, this is the right side. We have now built the right side. Next step is getting this gaskets on. There are two different types of gaskets. There's a thicker one and a thinner one. So depending on what kind of feel you're going for, I believe the thinner one would give you a slightly more flexible feeling, All right? One, two, three, four. Just kind of slot that over. There we go. Nice and easy with the legs pointing down. Okay. The legs are what's going to hook in to the bottom housing and stabilize as well as give you that little bit of flex that you're looking for. There we go. Now that's all there. I've already laid out the bottom two foams. As I mentioned before, we are using both layers of foam on the bottom. So we put this down, make sure the legs are lined up with the inside. You don't want your legs splayed out. Okay, there, the legs are all in. We are in good shape. There we go. This is in and it's nice and perfect. Next up, we carefully close the case. And the screw hole should line up. One, two, three, four. What I like to do is turn them backwards a little bit just to get them nice and seated. And then slowly start turning. Very good. That's in. It's only a couple turns and then they lock up. Um, and it's tight, basically. So I wouldn't go too hard on these. Locked in as well. You will feel resistance in basically like two and a half turns. And I think that's pretty much it. And there we have done it. The right side's done. Now let's move on to the left. The beautiful left side, ta-da. That's with the right side. We are gonna use two layers of case foam. We're gonna start with the thin PE foam on the bottom. Secondly, you have the thicker piece of foam. There we go. Nicely laid out here. And we can set this aside for now. The start of show. You've got the PCB and your plate. Just like the right hand side, we have aligned the plates. Hey, first try. Legs in perfectly. Next up, we are unboxing the little controller. It's quite adorable. I find it interesting that they chose to have the center exposed. I don't know what colors you guys chose, because um, I chose lime green because this is definitely highly unusual, but I think it looks amazing. Look at that. Oh, the rotary encoder feels really nice. It's a bit notchy, so you can kind of feel the steps. It's got a nice weight to it. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy right now. We're going to do a bit of testing. So we're going to plug this into our USB cable. Go. Oh, lights just came on. That's a good sign. Next up, we have these. It's almost like the, the Apple connectors that are magnetic. We'll plug it in and see what happens. It should automatically attract to the right orientation. And if it doesn't, that means that you have it on backwards. So that's in. Both our boards are now in. Next up is keycaps. These are the only keycaps that we found that matches this color for now. So, you know, placeholder. I know the shape's a little bit more special, but I actually think the colors work really well. As you can see, those light diffusers that we put in just now makes the LED shine through between the keys. It's actually a very interesting design um, and really, really takes advantage of that Alice split board angles that opens up that small gap for the light to come through. Very creative design choice there. I, I really, really love it. And then on the edges, obviously we have the one big one on both sides, so you can see the light come through there as well. Onto the party piece right here. How do we do the tent tilt? This is how you do it. On the right side, you would reach to the left and you see this little shape right here. You can either use your hand to pull or you have this earlier piece that we had 
shown, what you do essentially is put that piece into the slot and it acts as an extension lever, right? And what you do then is just hold on to this and you pull down. It takes a little bit of force, don't be afraid of it, and it stops naturally. So don't overpower it once it hits about this angle, right? So this is the stopping point, as you can see. Now it's nicely tented and you put it down and it's at a beautiful angle. If you bought the wrist rest, which I highly recommend by the way, because you know, they look amazing. Look at that, it's frosted, same color, matches, exact same perfect shape, and this can be tented too. So how it works is you take it apart, and then you take this piece right here, and since we are going to the right side, we are gonna put this down right there. Magnet steps on, and what you do then, you take the frosted piece, put the right side in first, and then the left side, there's a little gap that you slot right in, slot that in, and you are good to go. Put that up against your board. Now you have two perfectly tented keyboards as well as the supporting wrist rest. This feels absolutely incredible, guys. Um, I was super excited for this build. I've, it's been a long time since I've been ex excited for a build, and I think all of that was definitely warranted. This came out even better than I expected. I am in love with this board. I think this will be my primary board going forward. Um, we're gonna have to figure out some different uh, keycaps, but this design, absolutely incredible in terms of the tenting, hand angle, this is really, really comfortable, and it really plays into the strength of a split board for Alice style, where you have a slight tenting to match that natural shape of your hands. Remember, this is available for pre-order at loomkeeps.com. Check us out. If you like what you saw here, place an order with us. We would greatly appreciate it. www.loomkeeps.com. Leave us a comment. What else would you like to see? Do you like to see me take that board further apart and show you the inner workings? We can do that next time. Uh, we'll be doing sound tests as well following this. So stick around. We'll do a quick sound test with the XMX Violets and these PBT keycaps that we have on. <laughs>